G'day, and welcome to my review of the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. This particular one is running at the Ryzen 5 4500U, which is a 6-core processor. It's going to have 16 gig of RAM. I will upgrade it to a 500 gig NVMe. It's a 14-inch touchscreen IPS, and with a 3-cell battery in it. This is also running the integrated Vega 6 graphics. So to begin with, I want to check out the design of it. The chassis itself is all made of plastic, same with the top cover, in a graphite grey. It's all pretty unassuming, but also fairly Lenovo. Like this design's been around for quite some time now. The bottom of it has enough ventilation to keep it cool without being too much of an issue. Looking at the left hand side of it, we have the charger port, a HDMI, a type C and a headphone jack. Also, the Type-C on this can also charge the device with a 65 watt charger. On this particular one, it was included. On the right hand side, we have the power button, an SD card reader, and two USB 3 ports. And if you were hoping for some more I.O. on the back, you'll be sadly disappointed. With all there being on the back is a single vent for the APU. The screen itself feels light when you open it two-handed, but sadly you'll be una unable to open this one-handed, as the base of it's not heavy enough. The viewing angles of this screen are pretty darn good, but the colour reproduction is not overly great. From various information I've seen about the panel, it's only about 45% sRGB, and also I have noticed a bit of backlight bleed during dark scenes or when there's no images on the screen. So that is a little bit disappointing. Another cool little feature is if you turn the brightness all the way down, you can actually turn the screen completely off, which for a power saving perspective is quite handy. Also being a 360 laptop, you can flip it upside down and just use the screen by itself but the speakers then are firing straight down, which doesn't help for audio. Also, I find the screen just bright enough to be able to use it in the shade while outside in a brightly lit area. I don't think you'd be going too well in direct sunlight, but the camera here makes it look worse than it actually is using this particular display. As you can see, the webcam itself is actually okay. It's not great, but I've definitely seen a lot worse webcams and more expensive laptops. And also the bonus of the privacy shade at the top is kind of nifty as well, if you're kind of paranoid of people watching you. If you've used Lenovo laptops in the past, the keyboard would be very familiar. Another cool feature is the speakers being top firing on the left and the right of the keyboard, and also a fingerprint scanner down the bottom right hand side. The keys themselves are nice and springy, and are quite nice to touch, with a decent amount of travel with them also. The keyboard backlight has two different settings or two different brightnesses, dim, bright and off, as most keyboards usually do these days. One other thing that did come as a bit of a bonus was this Lenovo Active Pen, which is essentially a stylus similar to what Apple and also Microsoft have. It does attach via this weird little bit of plastic which pushes into a USB port. I do find that slightly odd, but also one way to be able to attach the pen. I can see this being a bit of a risk to damaging that USB port, especially while being transported. And one thing I did notice is the screen actually does notice when the pen's being used. So touching here, it actually gives you the option to write, where pushing it with my finger did not. The pen itself does seem to be reasonably accurate, which I'd say would be quite perfect for note taking. I'm not sure how well you'd, or if you'd want to use it for graphic design, whether or not it can compete at that level. Being I'm not a graphical artist, I can't really comment on that. But it is definitely a cool little thing to come with it, especially not ex when you don't expect it. And also the more conventional way of using a laptop is via the trackpad, which on this one I find to be perfectly adequate, no real complaints about it, 
no real tracking issues or left and right clicking issues at all. So just fine. Then to test out some gameplay, I loaded up my preferred game which is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This was running at 1080 with most settings on high and it seemed to average around about 60 FPS. It did dip as low as around about 30 and as high as about 80, but overall strangely very playable on this little APU. Another thing I found with this is it had relatively good battery life. Usually being able to get around about 5 hours on average, which should be enough to get most people through a typical school day. So, overall, who would I see this laptop being most geared towards? Definitely not the person wanting to play games every day, but also someone that requires an adequate battery life. So I see one of these machines to be relatively good for uni students or school students, purely because of the portability factor of it being a very small, light machine with still enough power to do most, most things people want to tackle. Be it video games, video rendering, picture editing, it can handle that just fine. Here in Australia, these can be picked up for around about, close to about $1,000 depending on where you purchase it from on special. The retail price of it could potentially be as high as about $1,300. You'll be starting to get a bit on the fence about buying it at that price, especially at the sub 1000 AUD, I would definitely see it being a worthwhile purchase, especially for the warranty and all new hardware. I did find a couple of small little bugs. One of them was when the machine went to sleep, it would wake up the display, you get the backlight come on, but I wouldn't get an image. I'd have to kill the power and restart it for that to happen. I'm not sure if that's a software or a hardware issue just yet, but I've only had that on a few occurrences when the machine's gone to deep sleep. I find the value overall to be pretty darn good, especially being that it's got the optional Type-C charger, which means you may be able to reduce the amount of accessories that you carry around, even if you add the accessory of the pen. The pen itself to me doesn't have too much value, but I can see how some people will like that, especially making it more worthwhile to have the 360 tablet style, especially when you've got this pen. Without that pen, it's pretty rare that you're gonna use it in tablet form. For myself, I couldn't see myself personally using this day in, day out. Yes, it has enough power and good battery life, but personally I'll be looking something a bit more powerful, purely for gaming and video rendering, where the touchscreen is a nice bonus, but it's something that I'm happy to not have in, at the cost or at the trade-off of better performance. So that will do for the today's review of the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 and I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye.